across the fence, we'll meet the Thurber family of Brattleboro. We'll hear from each of the owners about transferring ownership of the farm and how they work together to keep their farm in the family and their families on the farm. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Vermont farms are by and large family businesses. In a family business, relationships and memories are often as important as finances and regulations. As part of our ongoing series of programs on transferring the farm, today we look at a farm transfer from parents to a son and daughter-in-law. While no two farm transfers are quite the same, the one constant to a su successful outcome is good communication, which is easy to say, but oftentimes hard to do. Across the Fences, Keith Silva has this story. Ross Thurber lives and works on Lilac Ridge Farm in Brattleboro. The farm has been in his family since 1937. Growing up, Ross thought about becoming a farmer, but he didn't make up his mind until he met Amanda. I met Amanda while well, I was at UVM, and that sort of definitely changed the landscape um, as far as um, thinking about farming um, and farming with, with her. She was interested in agriculture. She was studying plant and soil science. Um, so we kind of came back um, together, and we were married the year after I uh, graduated. She had graduated a year ahead of me. So we kind of went in the, into this uh, together. The summer that Ross and I got married, which was 1996, we mm -hmm. talked to our caterer and we said we'd like to grow all of the food and source it all locally for our wedding. At that time, that was pretty uncommon and the caterer and our friends said, gosh, that's a lot of work and sounds a little crazy. You really can get everything locally? And we did. That relationship ended up being our first relationship with our first wholesale market. Along with Amanda's market garden, the family also sugars and harvests timber off 300 acres of woodland. The engine of the farm is the 50 cow milking herd. The milk they make gets sold to Organic Valley, a farmer-owned cooperative. Ross and Amanda were ready to be farmers. The owners at the time, Ross's parents, Stuart and Beverly, agreed and found the newlyweds a place to live and work. We were on strictly a trial basis. You know, he and Amanda actually worked for us as an employee, and that was, um, there was no, it was a trial to see if this would work for, um, work for them and work for us. And, uh, and then after they'd worked for a year and had, we had made a um, small apartment on the farm for them to live in, and, uh, and then we started exploring ways of including them into the partnership. With farm transfers, it's not unheard of to bring children and their spouses into the business. For Stuart, a UVM graduate himself, it was about carrying on a family tradition. It was a process. <laughs> I, I had become a partner with my folks. <laughs> And then when Beverly came on, she became a partner. But my father was forward-looking, I think, because he thought we ought to do more, and so we actually took over the farm in 1975. And how he came up with that, that was not done that much back in those days. Uh, you know, he, he Because he really gave over full control to the farm uh, when Stu came back from college. Yeah. In 1998, University of Vermont Extension helped the Thurbers set up a partnership in which each member owned 25% of the animals and machinery. This gave Ross and Amanda a chance to build equity. Ross began an intensive grazing program, and to ensure a more stable income, he switched from conventional to organic milk production. A few years later, Ross phased out the farm's Christmas tree operation because he felt the farm was too diversified. Stu and Bev still maintained the deed, but sold the farm's development rights. This ensured Ross's sisters had a share in their family's farm property, and it would also provide a nest egg for Stu and Bev. You have to n understand that the, uh, the next generation wants to have their own ideas, and you have to allow them to have their own ideas, and you have to create uh, an environment that, uh, uh, that allows them to um, to do that, and so you have to, you have to be positive. 
and um, you have to let go of control. You're not going to have a, um, another generation on the farm if you always want to be in control. So you have to learn to let go of it. Often those conversations start with my mom because um, she's, uh, you know, she's very keen on, she's always been very keen on the, you know, success comes from successful structure of a business or, um, or even, a, you know, family. So, um, you yeah, know, I think I would give her credit to saying, you know, maybe, you know, helping lay the groundwork towards um, creating a partnership. In such confined... Um, Ross takes a rational approach when it comes to running a family business. You know, I have a kind of complicated view of ownership in some ways. I, uh, you know, it's not the driving force for, you know, why I get out of bed every, you know, morning and work on the farm. Uh, so, um, it's not, it, was, it wasn't like a grinding um, calculator in my head, you know, when I think about the work that I was doing. But obviously from a, you know, from a business perspective and from a sort of, um, you know, longevity perspective, it, it made sense to, to do at that time. Um, but I, um, you know, and, and, and that may just be reflective of the fact that, you know, my personality and I'm, and I'm the third generation and that um, in the sense of, you know, if I was my grandfather, sort of, you know, the pioneer of this particular enterprise, then you probably might see it differently. Um, so I think there's always, with each generation, there's a, you know, there's an adjustment and change depending on one skill set and personality. Many farm families find dotting I's and crossing T's in a business contract easy. Sorting out emotions is much more complicated. I would say a spirit of gratitude is very helpful and also recognition that um, a farm transfer experience for especially the older generation may be really challenging and maybe um, they old sort of like put yourself in their shoes. Um, there are a lot of emotions there's I, attached to it. There's supremely a, a, a ton of identity wrapped up with the farm. Um, and a loss of identity and a transition can be so painful and can bring up a lot of things. It can bring up anger sometimes. It can bring up impatience. It can bring up sadness. And to really recognize that those are real things and to be compassionate too. Um, I don't think that in our situation we were subject to have to bear that for the older generation at all, but I could see how that could happen. Um, and also there's ups and downs, you know, just um, because things are going really great right now, it doesn't mean that if the following month things are, relationships are a little more sensitive that there's anything necessarily going wrong. It's just part of the process. It's kind of just what happens. And um, for all parties involved. I guess uh, clear communication and intention between all parties and um, I think laying the groundwork for honesty um, in which all, all you know that conversation needs to happen you know before you can even talk about the nuts and bolts of um, you know any kind of agreement that all parties need to have an inherent trust in one another. I have to say that Communication was the key factor to this, and there was constant communication. Um, we set up a weekly meetings. Um, we met um, every Monday morning to plan the week together, the four of us, and I think that was a key factor to understanding where, what everyone's goals for the week were. I think I'm not the one to want to accumulate a lot of things uh, as far as although it happened land and goods uh, I think of myself more of a steward for the land and for the farm and being able to pass it along and it's worked I mean we're not too bad off by doing it that way I yeah. see that Bev and Stu still like to lend a hand around the farm They've sold all but 1% of their shares in the business to Ross and Amanda. As for the land, the four partners worked with Yankee Farm Credit to form an LLC, or limited liability, company. 
The LLC allows Stu and Beth to gradually gift their shares of the land to Ross and Amanda. There's always been kind of a third party involvement in this process, which I think has been really important. Important for accountability, important for um, probably negotiating any peripheral tensions that might exist. I think outside advice is helpful. Um, and um, particularly when it comes to you know, you know, areas of expertise that you know, we're not familiar with. Um, but I still think that you sort of have to come at it with a pretty honest core of you know, understanding between each other um, so that you can take that advice and, and, and sort of bounce it a across you know, what you know already about each other and, and your own intentions. Like his grandfather and his father, Ross Thurber believes a farm transfer between families begins at home. The value is sort of Trump family in some ways, and I think that's kind of an important consideration. I mean, if, if the values aren't there within the family, it's not, going to, it's not going to work. You know, at the end of the day, no one's going to feel sorry for, you know, the family for not communicating. Except, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, you have to really take that and own that as a, as a group of individuals that, um, and, and unfortunately, there's you know things that are um, you know family issues that have nothing to do with farming, nothing to do with the business that get in the way of, of of agriculture and farming. And farming is such a loaded sort of term. Family farm is a is a kind of a loaded it triggers you know all kinds of things in people that think that um, because you know it is. Uh, you know, it's a unique business. You're taking care of animals and you're making plants grow. And, you know, it has a, you know it's, it's not a, um, you know, you know the, we're not producing widgets. Or, and, and I think that um, memories are involved, childhood memories get involved. Um, so there's got to be some kind of reconciliation that happens that, can, that, you know, this is for the greater good. And Farm transfers are personal and specific. And yes, there are tools and strategies for negotiation. Best to think of it like life. It's not the destination, it's the journey. In Brattleboro, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Joining me here in the studio is University of Vermont Extension agricultural economist Bob Parsons. Good to see you again. Thank you, Judy. Now you lecture, you hold workshops, you spend a lot of your time working with families on farm transfers. Is communication really the bottom line? It has to be. You have to talk about what you would like to do, what are the goals, and what are the possibilities, and what is the biggest thing is whenever you don't communicate, you keep those things bottled up inside, and that's one of the things that will probably destroy a farm transition somewhere down the road or in the process, or just simply failure to talk about the hard issue, and that is, where are we gonna get the money to live off of? You know, that's a pretty important issue sometimes, and if you ignore it and just talk about the cows and the machinery and the land and the legal status, if there isn't enough money, you better be talking about that. And so the Thurber family seems like they've got this complicated process pretty much figured out. How can you take what they've done and transfer that success to other farms? Well, there's several things that they've done there. They've talked about every issue. You've talked with them you know, from the mother and the father. And one of the main movers there, as the family indicated, was the mother. And she remembered coming into that uh, position whenever she married her husband. And her, uh, Mr. Thurber made the remark about how forward thinking his father was. Whenever he came home from college, he said, okay, if you're gonna stay here and farm, you need to be part of the business. You're not going to work here for 50 years and then find out whether you're in the will, whether you get the farm or not. And so they became part of the business and they made sure that they did that with their kids when they, uh, they come home from college. And they also instituted the thing goes, okay, we're going to try this thing out first. You're going to work as an employee and then we're going to evaluate it at the end of the year and see if everybody thinks it's going to work. And they did. Well, Bob, I want to thank you for joining us. For more ish about the issues, strategies, and videos from Transferring the Farm series, visit uvm.edu slash farm transfer. You can hear more testimonials from farmers and also get advice about specific topics like taxes, estate planning, and selecting the right kind of business model for your farm. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.